over to our actual presenter, Dave. Thank you, Christina and Alan. Of course. Can you see my screen? Yes. Wonderful. Sorry, I'm orienting this slide. Okay, welcome and thank you for being here. Um, my name is Dave Dillon. I am counseling faculty and a professor at Grossmont College in San Diego, California. I'm also a California Community College statewide academic senate regional lead for the OER initiative. I acknowledge that my home campus, Grossmont College, resides on Kumie Lane land. This land acknowledgement serves to honor and respect indigenous peoples and their connections to the land. Um, I wish that we were all together in person and um, the, the best that I could do is share a Zoom virtual background of Taipei Medical University where um, we were originally planning on um, being able to gather. Um, I am um, glad that the virtual environment, although not the same, has allowed um, folks that might not have been able to travel uh, to Taiwan to be able to participate. Uh, Blueprint for Success in College and Career is a college success OER textbook. The Blueprint text is a remix, including Creative Commons by Attribution Works from Open Oregon, Lumen Learning, and the State University of New York with intentional design of reading more like a conversation rather than a textbook talking at students. It includes TED Talks, personal essays, and culturally relevant examples that resonate with students and with faculty. The Blueprint text was published in 2018 by the Rebus community. I humbly share that the Blueprint OER text won a Textbook Excellence Award from the textbook and Academic Author Association, and an Open Textbook Award last year from OE Global in 2019. One of the most valuable and gratifying results of using the Blueprint OER text is seeing significant increases in student success and retention data. The Blueprint text has, um, much to my surprise, experienced unexpected popularity and has been adopted in over 30 colleges and universities and now reaches over 10,000 students each semester. With greater influence, there is greater responsibility. Uh, I, I acknowledge that I have a responsibility to include and amplify voices of more female authors, more authors of color, more LGBTQ authors, and more authors of differing abilities. And I will continue to strive for inclusivity and anti-racism in the content of the text. Um, so today, I just shared with you um, a background of what Blueprint is. Um, I'm going to talk about the community of Blueprint, really the how and the who behind um, what, what created this. Um, I happen to receive a fair amount of credit and, and accolades for, for Blueprint success, but this has really been um, something that, that I would not have been able to put together had not um, many, many people supported and volunteered um, their time and expertise with the project. Um, we will hear from two voices of contributors. So you have um, perspectives from different folks of, of their um, role in Blueprint. And then I will be happy to share an ancillary update for where some of the current projects are at. This is uh, what the front uh, print cover of the text looks like. Um, the theme of this is community, collaboration, and teamwork. Um, and I wanna start with a huge thank you and a, a tremendous amount of gratitude um, to my mentors. I, I was um, 
trying to figure out who I could ask questions to in the very beginning of this project. And I um, am, am extremely fortunate to have selected some phenomenal individuals that are forces in the open education um, global world. Um, and it just so happens that three of these four, Una, James, and Amy are presenting right now <laughs> at the same conference uh, in a different room. Um, so while uh, I may not get to um, give my gratitude to them directly through this session, um, I will encourage them to watch the recording later so that they can hear um, my, my thank yous to them. Um, and then Nicole Thinkbeiner is the fourth of that team um, that I affectionately call my think tank. Um, and she has evolved onto um, some different things, but the four of these people were always people that I could go to um, to ask questions and gain insight and knowledge. Um, and this wouldn't be what it, what it became uh, without them. So then there was platform support um, from a number of folks on the Pressbooks and Rebus teams, um, but specifically Zoe, Aperva, and Hugh um, were incredible with, with support. Um, and then that's a good segue into sharing these two voices. So this is a voice of Aperva from the Rebus community and from Tom Priester of SUNY Genesee, um, both who played parts in, um, in contributing to Blueprint. And uh, Alan, I'm gonna remember what you told me. I'm going to um, <laughs> stop sharing. I'm going to click on the video and I'm going to reshare. You're seeing the video now or a blank screen? Blank screen, yep. Oh, there's a video. Oh, she's silent. I am the project lead at the Rebus community, and we've been supporting Dave's project, um, Blueprint for Success, since about 2017. So for those of you who don't know, Rebus community is a Canadian charity that supports open publishing efforts. Um, and I was first involved in Dave's project, um, actually in, as a project manager of sorts, um, supporting the peer review process um, that the book was going through. So this was back in 2017 and um, what started out as a small group of about eight reviewers, plus Dave, plus a few of my colleagues at Shribis, um, less than 15 people, um, has over the past three years grown into a wonderful community of um, faculty, of librarians, of students and others who are involved um, and or using the Blueprint for Success series. Um, I know that right now we have over 30 adopters of the text, um, thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of students who are um, using the book and reading the book um, every semester and numerous other um, adapters and other touch points, um, whether it's librarians, administrators, staff who have um, helped the book and helped the project grow over the past few years. I want to highlight um, a few ways in which the team and the community behind this project has been so unique. Um, when we're talking about peer review, which is when I first joined um, just as this project, um, on the Rebus end, we focus not only on um, getting subject matter experts to come in and take a look at the book, but also um, accessibility practitioners to look at the book in its various formats um, for accessibility. We had students involved in the creation process as well. Um, we had a few who were um, sourcing images to make the book more engaging, laying them out in uh, our publishing tool, Pressbooks. We had other students acting as um, classroom reviewers to give feedback about um, how the book um, was perceived when used real time um, inside a course in a class. Um, and we also had the help of numerous librarians, um, whether it was to help us uh, check permissions on the various different sources in the book to build a glossary um, and even other designers to help um, with the book cover and other marketing materials. And this is just to name a, few name a few people who were involved in the uh, creation process of Blueprint for Success. Um, there are so many others um, who've existed all the way from um, community organizers who pitched the idea of creating an audiobook version of the book um, all the way to those with um, 
expertise in um, audio recording, um, grant writing, and others to support um, what is now a fabulous community of educators working in college success. So I'm really proud of how um, Dave and his team have managed to grow from just one single book to now um, a book that also exists in an audiobook format, um, one that has been adapted by other instructors around the world to better fit um, the needs of their uh, students, of their readers and classrooms, um, and also one that might be translated into other languages um, to better fit the needs of students um, all around the world. Looking forward to seeing how this project continues to grow. Hi there, I'm Tom Priester and I am the mastermind behind the open source textbook entitled Foundations of Academic Success, Words of Wisdom. And I've hunted for the most effective and the most affordable college student academic success textbook, but I could never find everything that I wanted to teach in all in just one book. It turned out that the pieces that my students learned the most from were the true to life stories that we included. So they either didn't read or barely glanced over the facts and figures, but provided very positive feedback and even remembered the words of wisdom from real people who have already successfully navigated the college journey. So I guess it makes sense because students love when real life stories are infused into the activities and lessons that we offer them. Okay, if I can transition back. Go right place. Are you seeing the slides again? Yes, we are. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so um, I'm happy to have the, the greatest technological challenge piece um, uh, through and, and thanks again to Alan. Um, so those were two pieces, um, one, one voice from the publishing end and another voice from an editor of some of the original authors. Um, and, and so it was a really nice experience for me to be able to um, kind of pick and choose of the already high quality open content in the college success um, genre to um, curate what I wanted. And, and, and I had a vision for what I wanted to put together, had not very much um, idea or confidence that, you know, it was going to be um, well received. And really, the beginning of this was just for me to create a resource to use in my own class. And so um, I'm, I'm rather um, certainly humbled and, and really rather surprised that um, with no marketing, just essentially word of mouth that this is um, spread so far. It's being used um, predominantly in California, but also um, in other places in the country. It's in Tennessee and it's in New Hampshire. It's been adopted in Canada. So I can say that it's international. Um, and and um, folks really seem to to like it and, and folks are participating in um, in improving it. So I appreciate all the, the input and constructive criticism. Um, the rest of these slides are going to be a journey through um, the how, the, the who contributed, and, and how, how they were encouraged to contribute. So um, these are the original authors. These are the folks where I started with their work and um, was able to pick and choose some things and put it into a remix. Um, then these are the authors of the work that Thomas Priester edited. And I want to point out that I'm so proud of the diversity within this particular group. This is the group that put together the personal essays. They're written by students, by faculty, by administrators, and by staff. Um, and, and these are the things, as in Thomas's words, that students love. They, they really um, they really connect with the words from this piece. Um, so I'm thankful for all of those contributors and the fact that they open licensed um, their work. Um, I was petrified to, to have a peer review uh, done, um, but thankful that these folks um, not only gave suggestions that improved the content, um, but did so in such a respectful way um, they were really champions of the cause and um, 
and I can't share enough appreciation uh, for them. Um, there's a librarian at East Carolina University that we um, put out an open call for, for someone to volunteer to do a glossary. And um, I'm happy to have that high quality piece um, in the text. Um, I recruited someone on my own campus to help with footnotes and citation consistency because when I was curating all the work, um, there were different styles and, and um, I did not have the expertise to try to be able to put those together in a consistent way. Um, as Aperba mentioned earlier, we did an accessibility review that was extremely important to me and so I'm thankful for Will and his contributions. Um, there were a number of students and um, hat tip to Christopher and Sean um, who put together a um, student volunteer technical um, uh, program and that's how we were able to, to use Devin's work and so Brooke and Devin contributed on the cover art, both the front and the back of the print cover, um, which has, has been widely um, um, applauded. Um, big thanks to Delmar and Jennifer. Uh, while this project started on, on the Pressbook side of things, um, Delmar and Jennifer helped make it, um, uh, help put it into the LibreText platform and makes it easy for folks to remix um, wherever they, they may have other content that, that they're coinciding with. Um, the support goes on and on and, and um, Huge thank you to Alexis who um, presented earlier this morning and a whole host of folks um, that helped. Um, there were other authors in other places who had put some work together. And this is an example of a case where um, I reached out and said, hey, your content is, is fantastic. Would you consider um, changing your license so that it's more open? Um, and this is the second uh, time, two, two for two, that that, that has happened. Um, Alexis helped with the other one uh, with SUNY. Um, shout out to the Stanford University Global Studies Division and the EPIC, um, the Educational Partnership for Internationali Internationalizing Curriculum Program. Um, this fellowship that I had the, the, um, the privilege to be a part of um, really helped support the new cultural competency chapter. Um, Federa Ellis Nelson and I presented this morning. I'm so thankful to, to be able to collaborate with them with the Life in Quarantine Project. Um, there are ancillary contributors um, all over the place um, and, and I'm thankful for them. Um, folks continue to adopt and to adapt and that's exciting because I think in the future someone is going to um, continue to improve the work. And I, I hope there, there is a day where I'm going to adopt what someone else has created um, and see the innovation and improvement. And then students um, have, have had their um, kind of hallmark on, on this project from the beginning, in the middle, in the end. Um, we're always asking students what their perspective is and, and if, it, if they think that it is high quality, if it helps them learn and um, in, in listening to their feedback. Um, quick update on the ancillaries, and then I'm leaving about a minute for questions. Um, we have instructor slides because those are things that instructors have asked for. Um, there are approximately five quiz questions for every chapter that instructors can use. Um, we have a beta version of an audio book where students have read and were recorded reading their each chapter. Um, and, and we continue to improve and refine that. Um, we're always looking for new content. Um, we're updating content and we're working on a Spanish translation. Amy Hoffer is, is, um, is involved in um, trying to recruit for grant funding for, um, for translators. Um, and then I just want to read this short um, quote on teamwork from a, a colleague of mine, Sharina Body. Teamwork is a complete denial of self-interest, individual statistics, and personal glory, all in exchange for making your teammate look good, even when they don't, and be successful even when they're not. It's making sure she knows that she's never fighting alone, and that she's not merely an individual member of a team, but rather an essential component to a unified whole working toward a common goal. It's been 15 years since she wrote that and it's still, um, I still get emotional about it. Um, if you would like to be a collaborator, this is a global call out. Um, 
I would be happy to, um, to, to work with you um, for the greater good. And I'm right ahead of time. I'm sorry that I went a little over to, to uh, not allow many questions, but thank you for being such a wonderful audience. Um, here's my contact information if you'd like to follow up with me. And, um, and please feel free to use uh, OE Global Connect um, for communication as well. That's exactly.